Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Quay, and this video is to accompany a press release I put out entitled, To Stop the Next Pandemic, Evidence That is Undisputed Favoring Lab Origin of COVID Needs to be Acknowledged. As we sit here 16 months from the beginning of this pandemic, two primary theories arise over where it came from. One, the zoonotic or out of nature origin, says that it began in bats and that there's an unknown intermediate host. The other is a laboratory origin where the virus uh, infected a laboratory staff member at either the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the Wuhan CDC. Five facts that are not in dispute need to be acknowledged in any assessment of where this began. Fact one is that COVID-19 wasn't smoldering in the community before the epidemic broke out, as was observed with previous coronavirus epidemics. This process is depicted here, where on the left panel you see the SARS-CoV-1 process, a virus that had adapted to an intermediate host, in this case, the civet cat, would occasionally jump to humans over a month and month period of time. Initially, those, those cases did not pass on to other humans, but became a dead end and burned out. Finally, on November 16th, 2002, the virus had accumulated enough mutations, enough changes to not only infect humans, but to allow human to human transmission. Because of this process, archived specimens from patients before the epidemic should be positive for those abortive virus infections. Of course, with a lab origin, a single person is infected with the virus in the laboratory, and then they pass it on to other humans in a human to human transfer process. There'll be no abortive community infections you know, pre-release, and so there'll be no seropositivity in any archive specimens. The WHO report states on page 25 that a total of 9,522 stored samples from patients with influenza-like disease in late 2019 were tested for SARS-CoV-2. All were negative for SARS-CoV-2. Based on similar testing for two previous coronavirus epidemics, SARS-1 and MERS, a 1 to 4% incidence should have been found. That is an expe expectation of over 200 positive tests, not zero. Fact two, neither the COVID virus nor any close relative has yet been found in nature, unlike prior natural zoonoses. Page eight of the report states, quote, more than 80,000 wildlife, livestock, and poultry samples were collected from 31 provinces in China, and no positive result was identified for SARS-CoV-2 antibody or nucleic acid before and after the SARS-CoV-2 outbreak in China. Now, virologists have predicted, quote, the animal host would probably have to have a high population density given the genetic findings in the virus. But in fact, to have these results of 80,000 tests with no positivities, the prevalence of the virus in the community in the population of animals has to be less than 0.004%. As a reminder, the, w, the Wuhan Institute of Virology has showed that with SARS-CoV-1, the prevalence was greater than 90% in markets observed in multiple studies. So now as we sit at 16 months, we can see that we are well behind the, the findings for SARS-1, where it took four months to identify the civet cat, or MERS in 2015, where the camel was identified within nine months. Fact three, the COVID coronavirus had little genetic diversity at the outset, unlike prior natural zoonoses. Nature loves genetic diversity, as shown in these corn specimens. 
in a natural zoonosis, the virus spends time in an intermediate host collecting random mutations in the background. So when it jumps into humans, that random diversity is seen. In fact, SARS-CoV-2 was a pure genetic culture, much like the vaccines that are be given, being given now around the world. That is the hallmark of a man-made genetic material. Now, those facts are consistent with the laboratory escape of a natural virus or a, or a manufactured virus. This fact leans toward more toward gain-of-function research. Fact four is the fact that the COVID virus's powerful infectious trigger called the furin cleavage site isn't found anywhere in its related viral group in nature, but has been repeatedly inserted into viruses by laboratory scientists, including at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And finally, fact five, the virus was highly adapted for infection of humans from the start, unlike prior natural zoonoses. Growth in humanized mice in the laboratory would allow this adaption to have occurred. My purpose is in trying to identify the source and believing that it came from a laboratory uh, is, is important. Without a public debate on whether gain of function experiments should continue, the next pandemic is right now being created somewhere in the dozens of laboratories of around the world doing this dangerous work. I thank you for your attention. This is Dr. Stephen Quaid.